Hello, this is David Brim, and I'm the founder of Orlando Entrepreneurs. We are the hub for Orlando entrepreneurship, and our mission is to connect, cultivate, and celebrate our local entrepreneurs. We bring together our local entrepreneurial ecosystem to help impact our entrepreneurs, their companies, and our local economy. Learn more at orlandoentrepreneurs.org. Now over to Josh Wilson to get forward with our show. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Orlando Entrepreneur Show. My name is Josh, and, and I have conversations with other entrepreneurs around the Orlando Entrepreneur area, the ecosystem here. And on today's show, really excited to talk with Asia Hall, who is the CEO and inventor of this really neat product. But let me just tell you the name of her company, Neon Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Asia Hall to the Orlando Entrepreneur Show. Asia, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. So Neon Cowboys is the name of your, your company. Why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Neon Cowboys is? Yeah, so Neon Cowboys um, is a wearable tech brand. Um, we basically make light up apparel and accessories for party goers and festivals. Um, really just anything that you might need to glow for um, and make a memorable night. We kind of make products for that. Okay, so uh, you you have this really unique product, and you're actually wearing it right now, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which which you weren't wearing it when I was like, Asia, why don't you go put on this cool hat? So l let me describe to the audience what I see. All right, so uh, Asia, I'm sitting across from her. I get to I get to see the the guest, and and she has this really cool cowboy hat on. And it actually glows. It, it like it, it glows, and it, it's really cool. And I mean, I, I want one too. But uh, you know, tell us, tell us, like, how did you come up with this really neat consumer idea? It's a wearable technology. Uh, it's a it's a hat that that glows. It looks like a cowboy hat. Uh, how how did you how did you even think of this? And and talk to us about the story of of maybe how you created this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I used to go to Stagecoach, which is um, a sister festival of Coachella. It's actually the third weekend of Coachella. It's at the same location. Um, and it's basically just the biggest, I don't want to say the biggest, um, country music festival that California has. Um, and I grew up in LA and went to college in Santa Barbara. So in college, we went to Stagecoach a few times. Um, I was big into line dancing as well and country music and then I had gone and kind of noticed that the crowd really had more of like a uniform where they were all kind of you know wearing Daisy Dukes or you know straw cowgirl hat or something and I wanted um I wanted something that would help enhance their experience even after the sunset and I knew that if you were to look at a neon sign that had like a cowboy hat in it like a Bud Light or a Coors Light hat or sign or whatever you should be able to wear the hat in that sign if that makes sense yeah. um and i knew that neon was like you know a symbol for partying and drinking finding a bar and having a memorable night and so i really wanted to capture that moment and create a product that enabled people to do that so so you were you were at a, an actual event and you said that people were wearing like costumes right but they're the the costume or the uniform that that people wear going to country music festivals you know you mentioned daisy dukes and and cowboy boots and, and cowboy hats and and everybody was kind of looking similar but you 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 saw a sign it was a it was a bud light sign or something like that you're like man that'd be cool if people could put that on their head right is that is that kind of how it worked out yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I had, you know, I had a, a second of a vision, but, you know, I don't know if that's a great story. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it was, it kind of just really hit me. And I was like, the, I had, was at my, with my friends at the time and said, you know, everyone needs neon cowboy hats and they just didn't really know what I was seeing. Um, so it wasn't until I then made prototypes later and we took them to Stagecoach the following year, um, did it make more sense to everyone. Uh, that's pretty neat. Now, you've been in you've been in the industry of of uh your i think some of your past is in in design in modeling um in in, in fashion right is, is that um why don't, why don't you share a little bit about your background so that we can understand how you you know 
you, how your background helped you create this idea and this concept. Yeah, I grew up in the fashion industry. My father is actually a couture designer, so he does um, more of the high-end fashion. And um, my mom helps him run the business. And so I just have always grown up in entrepreneurial lifestyle in terms of you make stuff and you can sell it. Um, and then I went to college and did computer science. And my first job out of college was at Electronic Arts. So I did uh, video games for a while and have just really been involved with fashion. Um, I've been a camp counselor my whole life as well, which really does play into the piece of the hats because I can look at an event or a party and think about how to make it a better party, if that makes sense. Um, and so that also plays into it. Um, yeah, and then I also, I, this is my second company. So I had a clothing brand with my brother while I was in college, it was my first business. And that really helped me learn a lot about what does it take to build a brand on social media? Um, what do millennials want to purchase and what makes them feel valued? So I guess that's some of the things <laughs> that play into uh, why, why these hats um, were designed specifically by me. I mean, you know, I don't know. Okay. So I really like what you said. How how to make a better party, right? So when you saw when you saw these these events going on or when you go to parties or when you uh when you see these experiences, you, your brain starts thinking, how could we make it better? Now, how do you think that a a hat that that glows, a neon hat, how do you how does that enhance the party? What does that do to the individual wearing it? Or why would someone want to wear this rather than just a, a normal cowboy hat like it like what 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 changes when someone puts on your hat these are great questions <laughs> thank you thank you i, I do this for yeah. a living <laughs> yeah it's really good um yeah i mean i think i think for these hats well one people are drawn to lights period it's just human nature we love it we think it's beautiful we feel comforted by it um so i think that just by it being a lighter product people are, are already going to have a better time um but also I think they're really similar to like, if you go to a theme park and you know, you buy a goofy hat or something, that's, it kind of just helps you lose your inhibitions and, and lets you not take yourself so seriously and lets other people know that you're not taking yourself as seriously to where you don't feel like I need to be a certain way or perform a certain way in this environment. And you're kind of just like, well, you know, hats off or whatever you want to put there. <laughs> yeah. we're, just, we're just gonna have a fun time. Um, and I think that, that that is what people experience with hat. It's really actually super interesting too because our fans that buy the hats have such a deeper connection with it that I don't really know exactly where that comes from. Um, but what I do know is that I had also thought originally about making these hats is like, you know, I'm obviously not the traditional cowgirl at, by any means. I grew up in LA, I'm a minority, um, you know, my roots are from Texas, but that's way back centuries ago, you know, great grandfather kind of situation. So um, I always wanted to have something while I was going to all these country concerts that kind of was a symbol of being an American, but not necessarily clouded by all the negative stigma that might come with being like a country lover. Um, and so I do think that some of, some of the reason why people also really love them is because they're like, okay, well, I don't necessarily fit into the country scene because um, most of our customers are not country music listeners, which is very interesting. Um, but they want to feel American pride and a, a sense of the American dream. And we have a ton of international customers that also buy it because it's an American hat. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I think that there's something really deep of what you what you said there is is that you know it's you're not a traditional cowgirl, right? You you know you, you mentioned you grew up in L.A. You're in the fashion uh, scene. You uh, you're a minority yourself, so you don't you don't fit the part. However, you made the part fit you, 
And that identity has really helped other people who do have pride in America and our heritage and, and what we're doing here. And the, the, what the hat, I guess, stands for is, is that kind of that pride. And, that, and that's really cool that you, that you put it that way. So you help people essentially with their American pride and their identity and, and do it in a way where it lowers their inhibition. Because you, you said that kind of neon is associated with, with drinking, dancing, and partying and, and having fun. Um, so it's like you're kind of wrapping up all those things in one. Did I hear that right? Yeah, I mean that's kind of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, don't know if I'm saying it. <laughs> I, I think together, together we will conquer this and uh, really help people like have a lot of fun. So talk to us about the second year you went back and you, or maybe uh, you you went back, but you had this hat, this prototype, and you brought it to that that music concert. Did uh, were you selling them there? Were you handing them out like? Like what, what, what happened there? So the first time that we went or I went, um, yeah, it was like, I, I knew that I knew what I wanted the hats to look like and what I wanted them to be. I didn't really know how to make a product yet outside of the fashion clothes. Um, you know, I've never worked with plastic or, um, hats or milliners at all. But when we went back to stagecoach, I brought, I think 11 or 12 of my prototypes that I had made after I had said, okay, this is a really gorgeous hat. It's exactly what I wanted it to be in my mind. Um, let's make a few of these and then take these to Stagecoach. And all of my friends, we all wore them um, and then kind of just got more customer validation and saw what the reaction would be for actual uh, country music festival attendees or whatever. Um, and it was insane <laughs> it was like really really overwhelming people were very into the hats and you know had offered 200 dollars for one have tried to steal one off our heads you know people are drunk at this point so you just like it was like people were clawing at people because they wanted a prototype um and then i was like okay well i think i could i could definitely sell this you know people were mad that they couldn't buy it that day but they were very, very, very much prototypes. Like, I couldn't, I could not sell it to him for two hundred dollars because I did not want that prototype to exist in anyone else's hands other than my own. In other words, it's like yeah. I can't give this to you. Yeah. Well, that's pretty ex exciting when when you see people actually trying everything they can do to get the first one to get to get their hands on it trying to steal right. it trying to claw it from other people's hands like that's that's got to be a little terrifying but at the same time a little exciting to to see the demand for something that you created that was so unique that the world's never seen wanted to be a part of it right it so, was yeah go ahead no no you that's your show go for it oh, like, yeah, tell me I, more I, yeah i mean it was just like it, it it was it was validating. I mean, definitely having the first company before it helped. It didn't feel as much as a shock because I had already successfully sold a few things. Um, but I knew I had something there. And then I, you know, I went with my friend's family and our friends from college. And his father had said, you know, if you want to put together a business plan, I will look over it for you. And since he went with me to the whole event, I was like, I'll get it to you in a week. Um, and kind of just gave myself a hard deadline to at least start having those conversations. So um, it's all kind of really like spiraled out of control <laughs> since <laughs> that festival. So, so someone asked you, they're just like, this is a really good idea. Why don't you put together a business plan? And you're like, okay, how about I get it back to you in a week? How was that writing up a business plan within a week? What was, was that like experience like? it was great because i knew i had you know i had recently got, graduated college so i knew that if i didn't give myself like a real deadline i would not do it like why you know, why would i do it um in my mind it's still summer vacation so um i just googled and found live plan is the one that i ended up using um and they basically just give you a template and help you think through each section um i've obviously have iterated it since then but i knew that if i had finished my first pass at what i thought i wanted to accomplish and got it to somebody one i could validate that i was serious about it to myself and then also to him um but also get advice from someone that actually has looked at business plans because i don't i didn't do business in college which i might have 
if I had known that I really was going to go into this, um, or I might in the future, I don't know, but it was, it was definitely a learning curve, but I was fine with knowing that I was not going to get it well done. Like I knew it was going to not be that great. So. Sure. So you, you gave the business plan, which was really great. I mean, you, uh, you Googled it, you found a template, you filled it in and, and you delivered it. What, what kind of, um, what kind or or how did you find this person to to deliver the plan and did they did they get involved in the business in terms of investing or advising or or do you have any of those kind of people that have helped you take this idea and move it through prototype and now into sales yeah i so he didn't invest personally but he did look over it and help me get it to where i needed it to be and then i had met like an investor like the next month and he was like, well, do you have a business plan? I was like, actually, I do. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> thankfully. So that person ended up being my first investor. Um, so a lot of it has been like, take the next step, and then the rest will kind of fall into place. Um, but the first investor that we got um, was really helpful because we were able to put the money into at least getting a mass. In theory, we thought of it. And, and when I say we, I mean I. In theory, I thought it would be a mass-produced version, but there's just way more work that goes into product design and development than I thought that there would be. I just thought, okay, I want to light up hat, I want it to be clear plastic, and I want it to line with EL. Uh, that should be easy, and it wasn't. So, but the first investment really helped us get those iterations down and start to flesh out like what the business will really be. Okay. So when acquiring and, and getting your first capital partner, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs out there who are in the product space and, you know, they're, they, maybe they created their first business plan or something like that, but to, to go from, you know, a background in like design and, and, um, and, and modeling and, 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 and those kind of things and like building clothing brands to, to the business side of, building a business plan, pitching to an investor, getting getting investment dollars, right? That That is a kind of a shift because you said you didn't go to school specifically for that. What advice do you have that you learned that you could share with the audience ab about that process that can maybe help them in their journey? Yeah, I think, I mean, definitely be patient with yourself is a big one. Um, like, it's really, really rough. And so <laughs> it's not easy, huh? It's really not easy. Um, you know, and I think it, we're, we're so quick to want a result and want to be finished and completed and, you know, off our plate. But when you're really trying to learn business, like there, there is so much to learn. Like I didn't have a clue how much I didn't know until I started to dig into it and was like, oh, I have to Google almost every single term in this article, you know, like what is that like and and learn what each thing means and what and like how to unfold that and unpack it. And I did do it in accelerator. Um, so I recommend those to people. Um, if you can go out there and do one of those just because you can learn through a program. But I also think you could teach yourself a lot of it too if you really like are disciplined enough to sit down and even just watch YouTube videos. But it's just hard to when you're actually running it to like step back and take time to like revisit and relearn. Like I heard Gordon Ramsay say the other day on a TV show I watched or something, he said, um, listen, learn, and push is like his advice. And I was like, I love that because so many times, even if you have learned it, you still need to go back, revisit, re-listen to what you've learned, think about how it applies to your life and situation now, and then really push to execute that correctly because I just thought it would fall in my lap more so, because a lot of things have, like, you know, Miley Cyrus is our first customer. Um, I mean, I could list things, but just having, um, having that advice has been helpful this, this season <laughs> for me. You just said something and you just kind of like, oh yeah, Miley Cyrus was our first customer. Okay. So Miley Cyrus was your first customer, first customer ever, right? Oh. How in the world did you get that? I mean, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a great first customer. 
she, she was a great first customer. She is an idol of mine. So I had always wanted to have her own some of my clothes. Um, we actually, it's funny, we actually went and saw her perform for her tour. And I, and I was like, oh man, I've got to get, I've got to get Miley next. She's got it. She's got to be the person that we get for whatever thing. And this is when I had my first company. And then I think it was like four months later, we ended up getting her for the hats. And I was like, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, but it was really a situation where I was signing the check from my first investor or the paperwork for the, for the first loan for my first investor. And then I had gotten the text message um, on the table while I'm signing it about Miley. So a lot of things have, have definitely worked, but you do have to push for the other things that you definitely want. And that I'm learning. <laughs> sure. But tell us how you got Miley oh. to be your first customer. <laughs> that is, I mean, for, for people yeah. out there, like, how do you read? How do you reach a, a, an A-list star to to get them to you know to to hold your product to get your product? Because I mean, there's a lot of people out there in the audience who would love. I, I think I said audience kind of like Christopher Walken. Sorry about that. <laughs> but there's a lot of people who would love to get their products in the hands of uh, of A-list you know players. So how how did you how did you make that happen? Sorry about that. Um, we so yeah. So Miley was interesting in particular just because, yeah, we like I really had prototypes. <laughs> like it was the same twelve prototypes or eleven that we used for Stagecoach that I had, and I was like, well, I need to get some media off of this, put it in my business plan, trying an investor. And so the photographer, um, the photographer that ended up using the hat prototypes. also follows, or Miley follows them. That's really the secret. Ah. I have not told many of many cool, so. <laughs> 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 so yeah, but I, I mean, I didn't really pick her because of that. I just knew that she um, was just like a, sorry. Um, yeah, I didn't really pick the photographer. I just knew that she would be a good person for the brand and, and she'd be able to like make the imagery that I was looking for and, and the, you know, thankfully, it being LA, LA kids kind of know what other kids are doing. Um, Miley had saw her post it and then reached out. Very cool. Very cool. So for, for people, you know, listening in, if they wanted to get like an A-list player, what advice do you have to get your product in the hand of a, you know, your idol? Because you, you're like, man, I really admired her growing up and and like I, I like her you know her style her music or whatever like how what advice do you have for other people out there like do you have any tips or tricks that would uh, be, be beneficial for other people to get their hand get their products in the hands of influencers yeah um, I'm, I've been very fortunate where once youth when I started in college they weren't monetizing it yet um, and so we were able to send a lot of product to people that had influence before Instagram started, uh, well, before Instagram was bought. So this is like, you know, earlier, um, and that was really helpful. But now with all of the new changes and with people, um, you know, using it as a full-time job, um, for promotions and sponsored posts, I don't tend to work with a lot of influencers, but that's also because we have an inventory um, shortage most of the time. Um, I think if you're trying to get your stuff into an influencer or even into your idol, I am a very big person on making sure that your brand looks good um, because, and really the best way I think personally to do that is through online website presence because that's where your store lives. That's where people go to see who you are. Um, and that's been really helpful for me because even if I'm not necessarily pitching to my favorite idol and someone who knows that person just sees the hats and goes to the site, then they're just going to send that person your site link. That's good. I'm point. really big on that. <laughs> I'm like, really big on brand. So what, what yeah. components of a brand do you think are important? So when, when, when creating a brand 
for for yourself like you have a really interesting name neon cowboys which i'm going to ask you a question on that following up but what are the components of a brand that you think are most important for you know for people to have when they're building a a, a product um yes yeah, so definitely photography media um and that's a hard one because a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of startup entrepreneurs don't want to spend money there but it is so imperative to spend money there <laughs> if you are trying to be a brand, um, especially in fashion. It doesn't make sense to not put money behind models and photography and editing and location and props if you're trying to compete in the fashion space, which I think is like a trillion dollar industry or something crazy like that. Um, like if you're expecting people to go to your website and spend over a hundred dollars, then your site needs to look like it's worth a couple grand at least for people to trust it enough um, and to share it enough. And I think also for branding, I mean, copy is important, but it's just not as important because we're so used to Twitter and Instagram and Facebook that everything's been condensed into like one or two sentences. In fact, I don't really even read copy on websites. I just kind of look at the headlines. Uh. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like, I think the images are the biggest selling point um, because you need to, you need, when they land, they need to land on your site and be inspired by whatever you're selling. Mm. Now, in terms of names, your, your company name is Neon Cowboy, Neon Cowboys, plural. Yeah, you're a female. Why, why wasn't it called Neon Cowgirls or Cowgals? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you ask that. I get, I get asked that quite a lot. Um, I don't know if it's the best answer, but I will give it to you and you yeah. can tell me. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> but basically, um, cowboys is actually a unisex term. What? Google it. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, the other reason being is we have a 50-50 male to female ratio in customers, which is surprising because we only really have media on girls, which we can get into that on later too. Um, I mean, long story short, it's basically because the guys don't take as many selfies and 80% of our content is all user generated. So we do pay money for photo shoots, but most of the stuff that you're seeing on our brand is all customer content, um, which is insane. But the other reason why I didn't call it Neon Cow Girls is because girls are okay with being called more masculine names and vice versa is not so true. So I wow. felt like if it was Neon Cowboys, everyone could get under that belt, even if they weren't that keen on it. But if it was Neon Cowgirls, we'd probably cut out at least 30% of our customers. Really interesting. Did you, uh, so you said 50% of your, your consumer base is actually men? Like yeah. women's hats too? Wow, that's awesome. And then, so that makes up the other 50%. But like, do you have anybody, um, I guess when, when people buy these hats and they put them on and they, they take, you know, selfies and pictures and they share it, you said 80% of your content is user generated content. Like, how do you inspire your customers to, to create this content for you and, and with you? Yeah. Um, we have a card in the package that just says, you know, share tag, um, with our social links. But honestly, it's really just because they want to um, and they're excited and they love it because we don't actively ask. I would love to ask because we'd get a lot more, um, but we're not set up to yet. We're, we're working towards getting like brand ambassador programs and everything uh, highlighted this month as well. So we should be getting more content, but really it's just because they bought something that they know they can't get anywhere else. And they know that they're probably one of the, one of the few thousand people that own one. So there's a little bit of an exclusivity piece, which I guess worked really well for, you know, like Facebook and other tech companies. <laughs> awesome. No, that's very cool. It's very cool. It's, it's a great idea. Um, so as you're, as you're building a, a product, you, you had to go because of your product is not, uh, your, your product is actually complex because it's a, it's a very, uh, defined hat it's see-through has neon lights running through it you have to have batteries you have to charge it what is it like going from you know designing jeans and t-shirts and, and and the other stuff that you created in the past to doing a technology a wearable technology like what 
What changed there when you were creating your prototype? And was it as easy as you thought? Oh man, it was so difficult. (laughs) (laughs) I imagine so. Oh my gosh. It took three years. It it took, it took three years just to get from the prototype that I had made for a stagecoach to um, the one that I'm wearing on my head right now. And it's just been such a long journey. Like I thought it was going to just be easier, but there's no way that I could have sold the handmade, the handmade hats forever because it's not scalable. Um, and also we wouldn't be able to sell it on the shelves. They also would break eventually because the glue would pop off. So there's just a lot of fundamental issues. Um, and, and like a lot of problems that most people did not have answers for. Like most people that I try to talk to or, or, you know, get advice from or help from, they just were like, we don't, we don't know because the hat is made out of polypropylene, which is actually the same plastic you use for cutting boards. It's also the same plastic that holds glue. So when we're gluing the wire to it, (laughs) it's like, it's not going to stick because this is the plastic that literally holds glue. Like yeah. glue does not stick to this plastic. So things like that, where it's like, okay, well, I, how would you ever foresee that gluing was going to be the number one issue for the first two years? It's insane. So the hat, the, the first couple prototypes when glue was applied, it just didn't, it didn't hold well because, because that is actual material that glue bottles are made out of, right? So it's yeah. made not to stick. So how did you overcome that challenge? So we, um, we have no glue in these hats now. So idea, I mean, and that was kind of the whole idea, but we had rushed production for Miley. All other stories, but anyways, we'd rushed production. So we were gluing them to try and like get something to go. Um, this version has a track in where the wire sits into. And so the wires actually just pushed into that track instead of, us gluing and then pushing the wire down onto a flat sur- or a little bit of a flat surface um, and then it has little holes too that that kind of like help it cinch it a little got it that's pretty cool so you went through you made prototypes and then what what happens after after making prototypes testing it you know kind of making the the perfect product like then then what's next in in this kind of business do you try to get into retail? Are you trying to, you know, how, how, do you, how do you get that product to the marketplace? Yeah, we were, I was selling hats. I, I was selling early, which I don't know if I would recommend to people that are trying to do something that is innovative just because of patent reasons. Um, where like, you know, you kind of don't want people to see it until it's a final product. Um, but I was selling out the gate just because I needed to pay that first loan back. Um, and also because I needed to really make sure that people wanted to buy them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. If I had the cash, if I had a 401k or something, I might've waited and waited until a patent was approved and then tried to sell it. But since I just didn't have that luxury, I was like, okay, well, we got to bring this cash back in so that I can at least buy more and try and fix these problems. Um, What was the question? I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So you were out of the gate early in terms of selling and you were selling uh, as, 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 as hard, as fast as you can. So you could, you know, pay back the loan and um, you know, like how, how do you sell them today? Like what, what is your distribution channel or, or how do you get the products in the hand of customers and get money from it? Okay. Yeah. So we sell online. Um, we have an e-commerce site, which we use Shopify now. We were on Squarespace for the first couple of years. We just switched over. Um, and we also sell on Amazon, which has been a really great partner. Um, we are part of the Amazon exclusives program right now, which means that we exclusively sell on Amazon, um, specific SKUs. And we were also even on the front page of Amazon last month. So that's also why we're sold out of inventory today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, we do, we sell on those channels and then we also have wholesale accounts that sell for us. Um, we also sell through Dolls Kill, which is, 
we just found out they're the fastest growing e-commerce uh, company in Silicon Valley um, and possibly all of California, but they also sell our products. And we partner with them on a few production runs as well because, you know, we're just small. So we need, we need higher volume to really get anything in the doors. Um, and then we also, I did a festival, I did a festival circuit year two. Um, and so I made a lot of sales that way, which we are thinking about doing next year. It's just horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you opened that, avoid it. <laughs> you opened that can of worms. What, what, what kind of horror stories are there traveling in a festival circuit? It's just really a carny life, which is okay. Um, but I was doing it by myself and I was selling out of the tents by myself. So I'd have to like literally hand glue hats in the tent to where people would write their name on a list, come back in half an hour for their hat because we just didn't have any ready. Um, and it's just hard. It's hard when you're driving from one state to the next state, checking into hotel rooms. You know, I would do the festival from 8 a.m. to... 2 a.m. and then go to the hotel and then glue in the hotel until like four or five to try and get inventory for the next day. Um, but now that we have manufacturing, it's like, okay, we could technically try again and bring a team out there. So it's not just me sitting in the booth. That was the other thing that was hard is if you're, if you're selling on the road and you're just one person, like it's awkward. So people won't come up to you and uh, buy stuff from you because they don't want to approach one person in a booth. But if you have you know, friends or people talking or whatever, standing, like they're going to feel more comfortable with saying, Hey, how much is this? Can I make a sale or transaction? So things like that just need to be tweaked. Um, obviously festivals are not as safe technically as they used to be. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, I don't know. It's just hard when you're traveling by yourself and you're like a female girl driving like 14 hours <laughs> in a yeah, truck. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you wear that hat when you're driving around? Um, after good nights, yes. I do. Awesome. Yeah, if it's a really good night of sales or whatever, I will have it. It'll be glowing forever sweet. True. When you when you are out and about at you know, doing line dancing or at a festival and and you see your hat out there, like how does that make you feel? Like the first time you saw that where it's like I didn't make that direct sale, but I saw my hat in the marketplace someone wearing it like tell, tell us about that experience yeah i really honestly i just wish it felt like anything in, anymore <laughs> 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 i think i'm so jaded at this point just because they've taken so many iterations i feel like maybe in a year i'll be super super appreciative of it i definitely i definitely it is definitely cool to see it just i literally just work every day but I do get text messages from other people that send things They're like, oh, I was, you know, out at this concert or my friends just went to Burning Man. I saw a ton at Burning Man. Um, you know, I'll get texts of, of random strangers in them. And I think, I always think it's cool, but um, the weight of being a solo entrepreneur definitely takes away the joy of that. <laughs> <laughs> it could definitely beat up on you a bit, huh? Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you stay, how do you stay positive? you know in in a you know when it when it's so tough you know years years we're talking years to to get to the you know the the right product how do you stay positive how do you stay motivated during those downturns those downtimes yeah the i definitely you know having a good network which you know, people say it's true like if you have good friends or good family good loved ones you know good partners like you're 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 gonna always feel better about the situation and not so defeated. Um, I really love to listen to music, and that's for me always a big pickup because a lot of songs will have lessons in them. So if I need to hear a specific thing that I'm trying to gain, I'll be like, okay, well I know that's like you know a song about going through the struggles or whatever. Like I you know or Miley Cyrus's song "The Climb" is my favorite song of all time. So like if I have you know, a bad day, I might throw her on or something. Um, and then small wins really help. Like, you know, we get interest in things that happen every week. And so even if I'm like really overwhelmed with all the stuff that needs to get done or, or 
execute it correctly. Like if I can get a small win that day or that week, or even just have a really good meal, and I'll be okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> We're all gonna be okay. <laughs> We're gonna be okay. It's gonna be we okay. Say that every day. I'm not kidding. We actually said every day here. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. Yeah. And not just be like my other my business partner too. Like she'll say that to me every day. We're like, yeah. It's just, like, it's just tough. But I think if you know that it's tough, it's not gonna hit you so hard. I just like to be really honest about it when people ask. <laughs> no, I love your honesty. Okay. Do you think that you've become a tougher person uh, running this show, running this rodeo? Yeah, you have to get used to rejection, um, which is something that I was not used to as a kid. How do you get used to rejection? Um, yeah, I mean, not taking it personally is one thing. Um, my, my theory right now though, is like, if I can get a team, it'll help me because I won't, I really won't take things as personally. Like I really won't be that upset because at least it's now a business. That's not just like I've made a product and here I am. Um, but I think the personal thing is just really the key. Like it's, you know, it's just business at the end of the day. Sure. What, uh, what kind of team do you need? Like for, for people who are listening in and they're like, oh man, I could do that. Or, you know, maybe there's uh, interns out there or what, what kind of people do you think would really be valuable to add to your team? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the, the major pain points that we need help with would be um, definitely capital investing, um, inventory management, operations are always a thing that needs to be helped like just getting processes made um we actually do have an internship program that we do with ucf um so they have like their nightline platform we're on there um, we've got a few interns that come in uh, every week right now which is really helpful um and i mean everyone wants to do the fun stuff right like the marketing is really fun and the photo shoots and the modeling and making the company look glamorous. Um, and that we do a pretty good job on. The business stuff is everything that has to do with business. <laughs> anything that has to do with business, we can help with. We have manufacturers now though, so that's really good. Um, we just got back from China, so. Oh, very cool. Well, welcome home. Oh, uh, <laughs> what, if, if you could go back to, if you could take the knowledge you have now and go back to right about when you were about to start the company, what advice would you give yourself? Knowing always, what you know now. Um, yeah, I, I always say buckle up. It's kind of what I tell myself um, because there, it's just the ebbs and flows. It's gonna be a real history regardless. If I knew what I know now, um, yeah, not put, don't put your eggs in one basket. I've had some bigger losses where I was just kind of holding out for, for that to go through or that deal to go through or opportunity. Um, and it just, because I was so focused on one thing, I wasn't able to see anything else. I don't know. I guess there's a saying about like the forest and the trees, <laughs> similar to that. The forest and the trees and then the eggs in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> I, exactly. I tip my hat to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. All those things are all true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be the thing. Literally buckle up. Like it's going to be really hard. It's going to be a longer ride than you expect every time. Like this is my second company. I don't imagine it being my last. Um, so <laughs> I'm kind of like, okay, we're in it. We're going to learn. We're going to iterate and then do some more stuff that's cool and fun for everybody. But I think if I had known what I know now, it would just be like, avoid, avoid putting it all in one basket and um, mm -hmm. let other things come to you and, and seek those out. Yeah, and, and buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Why, why Orlando? So you're an Orlando entrepreneur. Mm. Why, why Orlando? Yeah, so I moved here because of my boyfriend. Um, we had met at EA after 
I was working there or while I was working there. And then he got his dream job out here for EA. Um, and we were thinking about leaving California for a while because I grew up there and he doesn't like it very much. And so Florida was kind of on our radar and once we knew that EA um, was down here and he got his job. He's a video game designer. He got his job. We were like, yeah, we're definitely here. Cool. Video, video games and neon cowboy hats out in Orlando then. <laughs> video games and cowboy hats. I like that. That sounds yeah. like a fun time. Uh, does does he rock them out with you? Like when you guys go out, do you guys? We don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of an entrepreneur, huh? Yeah, we don't. That, that is all myth. We just work. Yeah. So 100%. when you guys are, are, are working side by side and he's designing games and you're, do you guys ever just put the hat, hats on and just like go, look how cool these things are? It is few and far between, but yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I mean, that's really that really is our life. It is literally video games and hats every night. I mean, and we will have the hats usually sitting in the living room on, um, just like while we're brain, you know, while I'm brainstorming, while he's playing, whatever. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does the future look like for Asia Hall? Um. I mean, ambitiously, I know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Forbes 30 under 30 has been a goal of mine. Um, I would love to be on that list. Um, I also would like to do a couple more speaking engagements. Like I just did a Pashakasha this year. And a what? Pashakasha? What's that? So Pashakasha <laughs> <laughs> um, is a organization i guess that basically they do a, speeches in every single different location internationally it started in japan it it means chit chat in japanese um yeah. and what it is is it's a six minute and 20 second or something talk where you have a slideshow and your slideshow automatically change, transitions each slide every 20 seconds so you get like 20 seconds per slide and it's basically seven minutes while you're up there um, and so it's kind of regarded as like, you know, it's within the same realm as like a TED talk, but it's not as established as that yet because it's not American. So, Got it. But, chat. I like it. So you want to get more, you're going to be Forbes under 30, 30 under 30 and do more speaking gigs across the, the globe. I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I did that and I did, um, American Heart Association keynote. Uh, this year as well. So. Oh, really? That's pretty exciting. It was cool. Yeah. I mean, it was for, um, you know, getting um, middle school and high school girls into STEM. Because you kind of helped take, in terms of STEM, you've taken technology and, and, and paired it with design. Is, is that kind of your, your, uh, your talk to these, uh, to these young ladies out there? Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they want to kind of hear more about the story, kind of see that people can do it like we're really underrepresented um as a minority but also as a woman in general um in terms of science and also kind of in terms of fashion so it is it is interesting they they definitely picked me because they knew that you know the the local girls out here in florida could definitely benefit from seeing someone who's younger um kind of do anything with science Cool, cool. So where can people find out more about you and about your company, Neon Cowboys? Uh, NeonCowboys.com is our company website. Our social media is all at Neon Cowboys. Um, Instagram is our largest platform. If you want to check out more of our user-generated content and um, following, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And then for me, my website's just asiahall.com. If you're interested in seeing any of my speeches, uh, those should be up there or any of the press that I've gotten. Um, my computer science teacher just told us to always make a website, so I just kind of throw up accomplishments on there, but I don't really promote it very much, but it exists. So if you're interested in me, for that, you can find me there. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Asia, this has been a fun conversation. Thank you so much for your honesty and just for the, the realness of 
of the life of an entrepreneur and uh, out there hustling. Buckle up, everyone. Uh, this is <laughs> this is what it's like to to ride a a a, a pony into into entrepreneurship. So, Asia, thanks for thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate you. Thanks, Josh. It was fun. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thanks for listening into the Orlando Entrepreneur Show. Uh, my name is Josh. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, really want you to uh, reach out to our guests, let them know that what they said on the show inspired them, that, uh, that it gave you uh, good information and, you know, just connect with them. That, that's my ask to you guys is to reach out to my guests and say, hey, I heard you on the show. I want you to know that you're awesome. Here's some encouragement. Here's some help. Or um, maybe here's some capital. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will talk with you all on the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening in on today's episode. If you would like to be a guest on the show or start up a conversation with me, Josh, your host, send me an email to josh at orlandoentrepreneurs.org. You can also find out more information on Orlando's entrepreneurial ecosystem discover resources to help you start and grow your business, and subscribe to future shows by visiting www.orlandoentrepreneurs.org.